All right, welcome back to episode five of Get to Know Your Mod Author, and this week we have got Hoth Trooper, and he can say hi. Hello. Um. Fuck, I was gonna say something. Ah, oh, screw it. I always screw up the fucking intro. <laughs> fuck it. The, um, <laughs> I figure most everybody knows him from Immersive Armors, which I realized uh, I should really hate him because. He started. He put the word immersive in front of the word armors as a descriptive as one of the first people to do it. The sucker got like three million fucking downloads, and then every stupid twat on the face of the planet now thinks that that's what you put in front of a mod to make it popular, not actually putting out quality content, which is part of my hate. So, um, it's true. Uh, so I mean, uh, Hoth, go ahead and like, because I'm I'm terrible, and people that watch my channel probably know I've been sick for a week and it's been pretty bad, but. Throw out your mods, what you've done, like, anything you're proud of. You know, just describe it for people who don't know, you know, the 2% out there. Yep. Um, well, I, I guess uh, most of my mods that people know about are in Skyrim. I've I've made a couple now for Fallout 4. They're not particularly worth mentioning, but they're in the same <laughs> vein of what I'm known for. I make armor mods, mostly. Um, I've done several other things, and they don't... You know, I guess they're not as popular. It doesn't really matter. I like to try different things. Um, like you said, uh, immersive armors and immersive weapons have a, a lot of downloads, and a lot of people use them. Um, I spend a, an incredible incredible amount of time making them. Um, so I guess I'm, I'm pretty... You mentioned what I'm proud of. I'm pretty proud of that. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what else <laughs> specifically to say. The, you know... Go uh, go immersive armors, I guess. I don't know. And as some people know by now, I usually talk with people for a while before I interview them. But I do know that Hoth has not really watched the other interview videos, so he probably doesn't know this is coming. And all of you know this is coming. Um, so, Hoth, uh, when are you going to make immersive Hitler for Fallout 4? <laughs> Someone already made Hitler mods for Fallout 4. There's, you could be a SS officer in Fallout 4. Don't worry, it's available. And you could probably do it uh, naked if you wanted to. All, the mods are all there for all that, that good fun. Well, I, yeah, I, I will not be making them. I gotta ask too now, since since I did the interview with some guy 2000 um, Kat is on board, who I did the interview with last week. Um, me and some guy made a pact that if, if paid modding ever happens, or if we for some reason ever make half a million dollars combined off of modding, that we will actually make a gay synth Hitler... Uh, Preston Love Story mod where oh. they artistically cleanse the wasteland, and Cat's already helped by making um, uh, by making Pre our Adolf Pres Preston or sorry Adolf Garvey, where he's got actually SS cloak and helmet on, and we tried to give him a little mustache, but we couldn't get it to work, and we made him white because we figured racism, why not? And uh, that's so we contributed to the Hitler mods. So are you in? Will you help us with the gay Hitler? fallout for months. you know this this sounds like absolutely nothing i want to be a part of but if for some <laughs> if if for some reason i'm making lots of money then why not you know i'll take that as a, 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 a conditional yes <laughs> sure <laughs> basically guys yeah. he's saying he's a I, whore and if i give him five thousand dollars he'll yeah, do it no absolutely there's <laughs> we, we all are that's that's this life um why? How did you land on a gay Hitler mod? I just of all things to make. You need to watch, and everybody needs to watch the some guy. It it went some guy two thousand is crazier than I am, and I dropped the Hitler question. Like I started with Ellie, and it just kind of just went downhill. I asked everybody a Hitler question. Some guy two thousand didn't even know it was coming, and he ran with an entire quest line story involving gay synth Hitler romancing Preston and making his own art gallery, and then artistically cleansing the wasteland. <laughs> I, I do settlement. think that I do think that um, Preston being gay and an artistic and painting and trying to like hit on you would actually be a funny mod. But the Hitler parts, you know, <laughs> I, I can't be pro. -Hitler. Can anyone be pro Hitler? I don't. I'm not pro Hitler. Well, I mean, I mean, different parts of his life. Can you be? You could probably be pro Hitler. You know, before he became like I like no. his paintings. No, he can't no. like his paintings. Yeah, I don't think even his own school liked his paintings. Isn't that part of the problem, they say? That's true. He had a best-selling book, though. It was on every everybody's shelves in Germany. I can't even keep going with this. Yeah, yeah, well, if they didn't buy it, he'd probably shoot them. <laughs> no, that was actually, yeah, that mean comp. Um, <coughs> sorry. <laughs> this is fucking... So, anybody we haven't offended. Um, right. Do you hate women? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, 
<laughs> if I make myself laugh too much, I'm gonna start coughing. Jesus. Um, any, what's your future plans? Like, what do you, what do you have planned for Fallout? Uh, if anything, or are you just gonna say screw it and go back to Skyrim? Um, I have not abandoned modding Skyrim, but I am mostly modding Fallout right now. Um, I have a, a few things I'm working on right now. Uh, I told you earlier when we were talking. Um, I was trying to make the uh, Great Con. You know, the, they're in the other Fallout games. I was going to put some of their armors, and maybe when the get comes out, maybe would make them a little mini faction or something would be cool. Um, so they're in the game. I was working on a. I guess it looks kind of like a SWAT armor, like you know when they when they do like breaches into places with armed people. They have like all the big. Yeah, the big protective type bulletproof gear on and stuff. I was working on something like that. That's that one's, eh, is half done maybe. I stopped. I I was actually pretty close. I would have been done with the, both of these a long time ago, but I started playing XCOM two, and I have been going hard at that for probably like a week and a I half. Have, I have neglected to download it just because I know I'd play it. It's actually good. It's very good. I I'm I'm a fan of those type games, but it's good. I actually have only gotten like halfway through Tomb Raider because I keep going back to modding. I have not. So there's a, the new Tomb Raider's out now. I haven't seen it. That's I haven't even played it. I don't even know. The yeah, last one. Yeah, it even came out for a computer finally. Yeah. The um the previous one I guess was like a year and a half ago or something. It was beautiful. I mean that game. It's incredible what they pull off. Th this one is just the same. It's fucking. Yeah. Fun. I I actually made sure to neglect um any read up on it because I knew there'd be like a ton of shit because it came out for, you know, consoles first. Yep. And it's like, I was telling you Discworld Terry Pratchett, uh, his daughter writes, wrote it. She's the <laughs> writer for it. And, uh, that's why I give it a lot. Of, the fam? Yeah. It's yeah. I, I, if she even has a quarter of his talent, she's, she should be a damn good writer. Right. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, just like some of the effects they did is, um, like when you're walking in snow, you'll leave like the footprints in the snow, and if it's thick snow, you'll actually trail the snow. Like you're when you shuffle through it, like just some of the it's just some of the gorgeous effects they have. In they're it. yeah, they they're they're game. leagues ahead of most people, um, in just making beautiful environments and beautiful gameplay. I the actual way the game plays out in the past, it's not my favorites to play, but it is certainly one of my favorites to look at. Just beautiful game. I think it ends up in the different veins, like Fallout turned into more of just a run and gun like type of feel, whereas I, you know, when I did Vault Two Seventy Three, the Prelude one, I tried to make, I, like I did a scavenger hunt where I didn't mm. actually give quest markers. I thought that was something that was really lacking in the game. Like there was the bobblehead thing, but you really didn't have any clues. They were just, oh, I randomly found a bobblehead. But yeah, but I mean, it's supposed to it's supposed to encourage exploration. Yeah, but see, X, XCOM, but I mean, that's, that's what um, Tomb Raider actually does. Tomb Raider encourages exploration in all the different places you can find, the, the lore you can find in the tombs you uncover, and yeah. X, XCOM is a whole different matter from both games because it requires strategy. Thinking ahead, planning, you know, it's at least the, the first one. I'm pretty sure this, the second one probably follows the same vein yeah. as the other There's, one. Exploration is not encouraged. <laughs> yeah, it's... Yeah. But, but uh, strategy is. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's like... You tend to not get all of those in the same game. You're going to hit no. different veins of the Probably shit, not. and that's what's kind of... That's why, I mean... It, Except I guess... The Witcher 3. The Witcher 3 does everything right. Yeah, okay, yes. Let's Don't get me started on why CD Projekt Red should just run every company's game development studio. And run for president well. afterwards. They, yes, and they'd get it in a heartbeat. Yeah. Not to mention they just give free use of their shit to us to use. We could port everything from Witcher 3 into Fallout if we wanted. It's, uh, they didn't, they're not just the best at letting use their their stuff. They're the best at making it, too. They're just that good. And they're pretty fucking humble about it. I love those guys. Seriously. I do love the fact that they said, if you notice, there's there's not, um, they're working on uh, um, Cyberpunk 2077. Right. And uh, they literally stated, I think, uh, October, I think it was October last year. They basically told everybody, every press, game place, they said, we're not releasing an any statements, nothing. We're not talking to the press for all of 2015. <laughs> they're not even going to bother. They Got said they're going to work on the game. They said their first press release will be January 1st, 2017. I was, I was pretty surprised when they announced this project. But you know what? If you, know, if you try to get in their shoes, doing something so different, I think that's fun. It's... it's but Who doesn't like to just branch out? They've done three games in a row. That's very, you know. It, it's not it, branching it out when you but... when you look at what they what they talk about. It's um, it, it's what I think a lot of game companies lose. It's CD Projekt Red. They said that they're they're pretty much you know they might do another Witcher. They love it, 
but they love they're doing something they love and they're pouring everything into something they love and they have a passion about and they talked about as a studio yeah and exactly it's something that it feels like a lot of game companies i mean bethesda was, we'll just use them as an example because we mod for him it honestly feels like bethesda is completely lost like i don't think they have a passion for fallout i don't think they even had a passion for skyrim i think they're going through a motion to make another game because that's an ip they have you know a control of and it's something they already have a setup for and it, it kind of feels like they try to make it for the lowest common denominator sort of like blizzard like when blizzard keeps releasing expansions for warcraft it seems yeah, like they don't I, care I, I wouldn't I wouldn't equate Blizzard with Bethesda very I, I much. I, I agreed with most of what you were saying about Bethesda. But I I give Blizzard um I, not more more credit's not the right word, but it's a different it's a different thing with them to me. I think Blizzard's become more of a like a monster than they know how to control at the moment. Yes. Well they branched <laughs> out and they branched out quickly and they've done it incredibly successfully. Um I mean they're they're relatively new MOBA and card game are giant hits to the point where they cancelled their MMO. Uh, mm -hmm. Titan. What was it? They called it the, no, no, the no, project. No, no, no. no, no. Titan um, or something, right? Uh, well, I guess we don't have a lot of viewers, so a little inside information. Uh, you know that game called Destiny? Yeah. Yeah. Activision reactivated it and pulled in what's-their-faces Bungie to fix the combat. Destiny's Titan. No. <laughs> no. Um, I, I can't give you the names, but it's been confirmed by four uh, Blizzard employees that I know personally. So that was a Blizzard? That was their, that was Titan? Yep, the framework apparently, and then they just fucking crashed on it or didn't know what to do, and then I guess Activision, I, it, this will probably be refuted by a lot of naysayers, but yeah, they... Uh, it, and when you play Destiny, if you ever played early Warcraft, you can see it. It's blaring in your face. Like, the similarities between rep grinding and how, how you did shit in, in vanilla Warcraft is literally there in a first-person shooter when you played early Destiny. Destiny's gone through so many changes since the original inception of the game that apparently it's good now. I, I haven't well, rebooted it. It's a pile Destiny of shit. sold really well on console, though, right? Because of the hype. Yeah. Idiots like me fucking pre-bought it. Like, I, I wish oh, I had never you're, bought the yeah, game. Don't even don't even admit to that. You're the scum of the earth. I know. Pre I'm fucking never <laughs> pre-buying another. I, that that game sealed the deal. I won't pre-buy another game. I pre-buy it one minute before release if I'm going to do it. Unless it is a whole series that I am following, and I would, and I want to support the series. You know, I, those are the only ones I pre-order. Yeah, I I just hate the like the. Well, like what we did for Fallout. I, I don't like the fact that we all bought Fallout and then beta tested it for two months. <laughs> we paid to beta test it for fucking Bethesda so they could fix their bugs. Like, hey. You know, though, it's worth supporting them. They do make good games. They make the kind of games that I like to play. They're not always perfect, in fact. It's, they're quite far from perfect. But if other people were making... In which there are. There are more people making big open world games, you know. But still... You know, if, if there was more competition, maybe they wouldn't have to release with bugs, or they wouldn't be allowed to. But they're not. Well, no they're, one's really not. Not many people are in league with them. People give them people give them shit about the bugs, and honestly, the way the game is programmed and the vast majority of choices, like the that's part of the hardest thing I have to do with um, when I make quest mods is accounting for the user fucking shit up, and that's yep. something that you can't do because. 5,000 people downloading your mod means there are exactly 5,000 different combinations of things that are happening inside your mod because yep. they're they're all going to nobody's going to do the exact same thing yeah, as Yeah, so you else. make quest mods, so you have to deal with that more than I do. Yeah, and and the the funniest thing that you have to deal with is early like in Dragon Break I just gave up at points just for speed sake and I would put invisible walls behind people to blockade <laughs> people so they couldn't exit in a certain direction. And then I would have people TCLing through the invisible wall instead of taking the clear and open doorway in front of them. And they'd TCL through the wall and then complain nothing worked. And I'm like, God damn it, I can't oh, that's, win. Yeah, I if, can't they're, win. if they're consoling through places, that is their fault. But yeah, it's like, I, I, I actually don't hate Bethesda as much for the bugs. A lot of people get on their shit about the bugs. I don't hate them at all. I, I, I think what you said is true, that they seem a little jaded on their own products. I think that's true. But they still make good products. I, I agree. I think I, I think what I don't what I see in them is that they're they're an older school company. Like 
the uh, the game could be better, but any game could be better. You could say that as a blanket statement, so it's not really the greatest statement. But it's like they haven't updated. It's like we're using Microsoft. You know, we're using Windows Seven to Ten. There actually isn't much of a difference besides the user interface. Yeah. And that's what it feels like going from Fallout 3 to here. We've got a way prettier user interface, but it doesn't seem like they've adapted a lot of things. Well, people like... have actually argued the sa- for uh, th- that same argument for Fallout and for um, the Elder Scrolls series, that they're getting broader, but less detailed. And in almost every respect, the worlds are bigger, but less detailed. The quests are more, but less specific. The And less detailed. I mean, just, but everything's getting bigger, but there's less uh, life. There's less soul to it. It's just kind of big. But, you know, that's yeah. where mods kind of pick up, and, and I that's think what that's one say. reason that they, they it, work. It gives us this great sandbox to work in. That's true, but I don't know. I, I feel like it's just, yeah. But, I mean, and then you look at, I mean, like I was saying, the Tomb Raider game. The Tomb Raider game's got great story. It's got great characters and personality, but it all focuses around one central character. With it's also actual, very driven. Yeah. It's, um, it's, you it's a you don't have too linear. many choice, yeah. And so, I mean, you get you can do more character development with that kind of a story than you can with giant open world, which... Actually, I'm going to ask you this quick, because I didn't really ask anybody. What do you think about the player voice? Because I think it was a great concept and then a failed implementation. That's my personal view. I, I don't... I wouldn't call it failed. I think it is better than none. I think that voicing everything is something games should have been doing a long time ago, and people are sometimes just catching up on now. I guess maybe some people, as a preference, don't like it, but they could probably just have a toggle, which I think they do. Don't they have it so you can just have no voice? I think somebody anyway. made a mod so you could. I thought it might be a vanilla option. I can't remember. Anyway, I'm sure you could make a mod for it, just delete all those sound files. But um, Anyway, I, I, think it's, I think it's a good thing. It's something that... Um, I'm a huge Dragon Age fan. You know, they moved to, and I preferred it. I, and I, I think, I think the way that I'm thinking about it is, uh, voice actor, voice acting in Bethesda games has always, to me, felt a little flat for like 75 percent of it. No, you're and, you're right there. I and, guess so. What you mean, your implementation? It, it didn't. Yeah, it didn't sound. It didn't like, feel right. It didn't feel right. Like the yeah. voice acting, I think, is what I'm saying. Like I love the idea of voice acting in main character. No, they right. they skimp. They skimp on their their budget for it. Um, the I mean, Skyrim was famous is, for having you... one guy voice like nineteen <laughs> characters or yeah. something, and you could tell he just sounded like himself. <laughs> he sounded like he was taking downers after like character number ten. He's like, I just yeah. want to kill myself. Yeah, but, I mean, he's... why would you skimp on the main character? Because Dragon Age, you're right. Dragon Age, fucking phenomenal. But yeah. They had tons of lines in that per character. And, the and they use very, brilliant. very famous, well-recognized, talented voice actors. They pay well for it, and but it, they get results. But even then, you don't have to, like... I've had some some of my best voice actors that I've had for some of my quest mods that have been brought the most life to my characters are the ones that I have paid. They're the pro- more professional-sounding ones. But... I've had people voice, you know, 1,000, 1,500 lines, and, and granted, the main characters have 12,650 lines, okay? They have a lot of lines in, in Fallout, I get that. But I was paying people, like, $150 for 1,000 lines, and some of these people just nailed it out of the park. And they'd send me multiple takes of all the freaking lines, and it's like, I, you know, I get Some people that have a natural voice for this stuff, and if you already have a natural voice that works well, it's just talking for you. You know, it's a fun hobby. True. Um, I honestly think that Bethesda, like, I think a lot of game companies should branch out into their communities, especially if they're established, because there's a lot of people that would jump at that opportunity and do it for one fiftieth the price they're paying other people. And as we know, Bethesda yeah, is cheap. But, well, so, with the big money that people like Bethesda work with, I, I mean, I'm, I, I know maybe this is uh, just being devil's advocate here, because I kind of agree with what you're saying, but when you're a big money company, you generally get what you pay for. And then it, Paying more doesn't always work, but paying less, it actually, there's just scientific evidence. You just get what you pay for usually. So that's why they overpay people, because it works. I don't even, no one even knows why it works, I swear, but it, it does. So they just pay the best. So does that, you know? that, that's the next question. Do you think they're underpaying their voice actors? Because then it feels like it. I think that they are not getting the big names, because, which is, 
I think there's a downfall to that because some of these big name people have a you know not the biggest following between their games, but some you know it leverages some sort of following towards their games. People, these companies are big enough; they don't really need extra people. But I don't know. Um, like there's a, there's a guy I don't know his name, but he does all the orcs. He's incredible. He sounds like an orc. He's an orc. <laughs> He does. He's. I see. He's like a chain smoker. He's got that like really low raspy voice from smoking for like a hundred years, and I don't know. He in everything, in movies, in games, but he's very well paid because he's always lined up to voice an orc. He's just that good. If you don't use him, you're not using orcs. Someone else is gonna sound worse. It's just how it is. Yeah. Eh. I guess it's all. It's all frustration because we love the damn game. And then yeah. it's like, people are like, well, if you hate it so much, I'm like, I'm critical because I love it. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> it's like, yeah, well, clearly, it, clearly, if I didn't love it, I wouldn't sit around. You wouldn't spend this much thing. time messing with it. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't even be wasting time doing video recordings for people like Jesus. No, I'm, <laughs> no, no, I'm chewing on a cough drop tonight. It's not like I got a dick in my mouth. Like, fuck. I actually managed not to cough, but then again, I've gone through two and a half. The Freudian months. slip there. <laughs> 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 All right. So let's get on to the other two fun topics that everybody's like, stop asking these questions. I like asking these questions because it's kind of funny because I've, I've, I've gotten differing opinions on each each time I ask the questions. And it's uh, and my opinions are are all, all well thrown out there. I, I shove them in people's faces like I'm swinging my cock around. So um, what are your feelings on on all the fucking sexy, skimpy, slutty shit that honestly hasn't tended to dominate the front besides that two-week period of just titty nexus over december um, when caliente's yeah. body slide came and out everybody decided they want to just do seven hundred thousand different presets well they they made it easy to make presets and so people could do it very rapidly yeah but what do you think about that i mean in general skyrim has a waifu follower on the front page uh, two out of the six hot files almost every damn week and i mean just Nothing but I can't. Like, what do, what do you what do you feel about that? The sexy outfits, the slutty outfits, the in my terms objectification of women in mass in a gaming community. But like, what do you feel about that? So anybody who actually knows my mods or uses them is probably not a big fan of those mods because there's no crossover. Um, I've had lots of requests like, "Hey, can you you know make skimpy versions of immersive armors?" Like, no, no, I will not do that. I can't, I could waste my time doing that. I don't play that way. And I, you know, I think that most of the people use my armor mods to avoid those armor mods because it really doesn't work well together to have the type of armors I make in the same game as those. Like, you really got to pick or choose. I, I really don't think there's a big crossover. And I think that, um, to me, it takes away from the game. Uh, I, I don't care if anyone else uses it. They can do whatever they want. I think it. I will say this. I think it puts a bad name on the Nexus to most people because we're people who you know do a lot of stuff on the Nexus. I, I, I spend a fair amount of time on it. I post a, a lot of my mods on it. I'm associated as like a, a, a kind of a strange, perverted type person, but that's not me. Uh, you know. But I don't care that other people are like that. But the generalization of the Nexus is that it is this weird sex mod hug box where, you know, everyone has to be nice and everyone likes big bouncy boobs. And that's, but, so we're thrown in that category by association because of what you said. You look at the front page and it's always full of it. I don't know, I don't know what you do about that. People are entitled to use whatever they want and I don't care. I don't care that they use it, but if you ask my opinion, I don't particularly like it. And I actually think it does give a general bad name to the modding community for this game. Because not every game's modding communities are full of that. Okay, I've been gritting my teeth trying not to laugh. Um, just for <laughs> clarification, you'll realize why in a second. Just for clarification, I've never talked to you before today, correct? No. I never breached that subject with you in talking with you before this interview, correct? No. And you didn't even have a fucking clue about my mods or even watch any of my other videos before this. I knew you make building mods. Because 90% of what you just said is the exact opinions I have had about this fucking thing. <laughs> and people actually think that I... Because I, 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 I do voice a little strongly against the whole slutty thing. And I, I, I've got to make, make a clarification rant video at some point. Because 
I'm actually in favor of like Lover's Lab. I've been a community member there for a long time, and it's I I think that my argument against it is that people are like, well, uh, people are free to do what they want. And I'm like, yes, but we don't put hardcore porn on the front display rack in a fucking Walmart. Yeah. And you're right. That's one of my biggest bitches. Is I'm associated. And somebody was like, "Well, what you? So do you think that you know?" Because I told him, I says I tell friends that I mod the game, and some people are like, "Oh, you make porn mods?" I'm yeah. Like, Jesus Christ! Is that really how they view our community? No, it is. So I I have a couple, and they're dated, and they're they're tiny, and they're old mods that are on Steam Workshop. I'm I'm I hate their system. That's a whole different conversation. But <laughs> yeah. I get a lot of requests. They're like, "Hey." Could you put your bigger mods here? For one, they don't fit. They won't let you have big mods there. But anyway, so I'm always like, no. No, I won't. But you can download them on the Nexus. And they're like, well, I don't want to go there. That's like, it's just like all naked people and like a bunch of weird pervert people. I don't want to go download there. And I'm like, you know, I understand what you're talking about. And, and it's, it's not. It's I'm not, not going to sit here and tell you no because the facts are kind of yes. And, and the problem is, like, the moment you make an account, you log in, and then you can see the front page with tits and any vajayjays. And you log out. out. Yeah. yeah. Like, how hard would it be just to make a full adult section? Like, just make sure things are tagged as adult or whatever and put it in its own section. Like, have I, I, think own... There's, there, I think there's probably more problems with trying to fix the issue than than, than leave it how it is, for all I know. But uh, well, I, I, most all I'll say is I'm, I'm not a it. huge fan of the fact that that's wildly popular. But it's, you know, I don't have to download it. I, I don't, com I truthfully don't understand how it gets quite so popular, which means I'm out of touch with a, a fairly large portion of mod users, but no, that's, no, no, it no, is no, what no. it is. Hold on. This is, this is something that I take a big disconnect with. Like, I actually took a big, big, massive stand against one of it. Because part of the problem is, is that the people who download a slutty armor or slutty bobbleheads or nude armor, those same people will always download the next one. So if you have 100,000 people who are in, in our community is like millions, right? So you yeah. have a hundred thousand people who are downloading Slutty Armor one, two, three, and four. They always make the hot files because that's a hundred thousand people yeah. downloading it in your endorsement rates. But five hundred thousand people downloading twenty five different mods based on taste get overlooked because of the mass, the chunk of the the pervy chunk is always gonna congeal around the pervy shit. And the people who make the waifus, make the slut mods, make the they know this. And it's it's not like it's a so it's not it's not a, it's it's a it's a chunk, but it's not anywhere near the majority of mod users, in my opinion. And it's, okay, so it's as a subsection, a, a larger. It is large. Yes. You know, a, a minority majority, if you will. <laughs> but I, it always shows up as bigger than it is because of yeah. the fact that they all hit the same thing at once. Whereas, you know, five different quest mods get five different types of people with taste. So, you know, it's, just, it, it's kind of a one, preference. One thing though. we talked about bef before this uh, is how something that is popular feeds on its popularity. Correct. Um, I think that some of the more core users of the Nexus who, are, who spend a lot more time looking at files that are not recent on the recent list or the hot list are in the group who like the naked bots or whatever. This is my theory. Anyway, so because because of that, they don't get overlooked as much. So they do make it to the hot files. And if you're in the hot files, you're, more people find you. If uh, it's That's part, just it's, how it is. It's part of the problem with the hot files is the moment I, you make the hot files, you're in the hot files till your time runs out. And You can be bumped out, but it's hard. It's hard to be bumped out. Someone would have to move up very quickly. Yeah, I've bumped a lot of people out. The uh, <laughs> Yeah. Ellie actually cussed me out in PMs once for that. The uh... <laughs> oh, and and you know there you know there's a there's a the, like I'm gonna just give this away for people right here and there. Um, there's a trick to it too because it's really stupid. Once I realize that it's just endorsement based, that's it. Yeah, it's that's just endorsement trick. based. That's no, not no. a trick. That's just no, how no. It's... here's most the trick. endorsements in the last like two weeks or something. Here's the trick. No, no, it's endorsements. It's just most endorsements. That's it. You have the seven-day period from when you released your mod that you can actually be in the hot files. Yeah. The moment that seven days wears off, you automatically never make the hot files. You're not eligible. So yeah. it's just endorsement-based. So if you have, you know, if, if you if there's six mods at 150 endorsements, uh, they're going to be in the hot files. If somebody gets 151, they bump the last person off and so forth, yeah. right? Yeah. Well... If somebody downloads your mod a second time because of an update, they get prompted for an endorsement. 
Yeah, so you're saying update like seven times and you're more likely to get endorsements? People wonder why I release my mods and then update the shit out of them. Sometimes it's, <laughs> I actually do it because people give me really good ideas. The Buster Sword is another prime example. I just released it with five materia slots. I want to do testing on it. I have plans for ten more. I'll probably do another five and then another five. And it prompts it for the endorsements. And it bumps you into hot files super fast. And because people don't endorse the damn thing. No, they don't. It's 15 so minutes I, away. I... I have not ever used that strategy. I guess it never really occurred to me. I, I guess I've got enough people interested in my stuff that I've never had to worry. But I will say the very first thing that I made for... Well, it's the second thing. It gives, like the, the castle thing, I don't count that as a whole mod. But the, the first armor I made for Fallout did not make it to the hot files. And I was like, wow. <laughs> maybe, just maybe, no one who likes my stuff from... from uh, you know, Skyrim plays this game. I don't know, because I, I could make almost anything in Skyrim and it, it hit the hot files. It, I think that somewhat out of respect for the amount of work I've put in, some people just, you know, kind of follow some of the things I post. I don't know. I, it's very hard not to achieve the hot files when I post a file these days. Um, which, thank you, everyone, I guess, who, you know, <laughs> endorses my stuff. Legitly, though. Like, I, I do appreciate it. But but it, I put this out. It took me a lot of hours. Because, you know, the first thing you make always takes the longest, too. Oh, trying to figure out all the tools and everything. It took forever. the first forever. mod I put out? It was fucking elevators. That was the dumbest shit I could have started with. <laughs> yeah. Well, my, mine was... Uh, I called it Armored General, but I, I really... I, like I told you, I was in the Minutemen was my first playthrough. And so I liked the Minutemen armor, but it was like a pile of shit. So I, <laughs> I wanted to make it better for late game but then also look better so i you know that's what i did and everyone was like yeah that's not good <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah it's like i made another armor way later it's got more than double the endorsements already um i don't well, know part of the thing i think with that too is it kind of like it feels like people aren't checking the nexus or downloading mods as much because there there's this well for a there's this inordinate amount of fear about pre-CK mods, which is just eh. so ludicrous. Is there still that? I oh, thought yeah. that was I thought that was for uh, software that no one is using anymore. Nope, there's still that. There's, you see a Reddit post all the time about it, and there'll be people huh. like, I'm scared to use mods before the CK! And then my favorites are like, what new, what CK, like, what are you looking forward to when the CK comes out? And people are like, armor mods, new weapons. And people are like, are you stupid? You can do that just fine right <laughs> they now. Do that now. They should, they should be looking forward to locations. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm so looking forward to that. The, um, uh, and the other one is just, um, laziness. I think they're just waiting for DLC and shit and for, you know, I, I think if we actually, depending on how Bethesda does console modding, you know, if it's if it's actually an easy enough platform, because it's literally got to be point-click install. So yep. pe people don't understand that, um, like... Load orders and, uh, you know... Yeah, I, I get constantly berated. Like, I even talked to Stuke and the other guy was, uh, for settlement keywords. Like, I fucking hate settlement keywords, and I hate... I don't hate the mods as concepts. I hate the user base who is, like, fanatical because they keep contacting me. Can you make an SK patch? On my front page, it says it's compatible with everything because I make my mod smart. And on, S on, on SK's page, it says DD everything by DD Productions 83 is compatible. Stop pestering him. And people still pester me. I just had another one today. Oh, I, I get that. for There's uh, armor keywords and there's armor oh. smith extended. And they're like, hey, can you add like armor smith extended stuff? I'm like, what, you are you want me to? Because that's not my mod. <laughs> why don't you get? Why don't you do it? Or why don't you get someone else to do it? I about, know. Like, is it not enough? I made this for you. you like, hey, no, no, no. But, but but make more stuff for it. And think and then and then tomorrow, you know, there's <laughs> Armor Smith Extended uh, Junior that some other guy makes, and it's like, hey, can you support Armor Smith Extended Junior? Oh, and Caliente, I need body slide for her bo body. See. But then there's the Jane bot, and then there's now tomorrow <laughs> there's another bot, and I need you to make all these. But I'm like, you know, no. I can't support everyone. <laughs> but see, I'm firmly under the belief that the, the, the armor smith extend or whatever the armor keywords and SK will literally be junk. They'll be junked when Bethesda releases uh, Automatron especially. Because Bethesda knows there's a problem with the crafting system. They've mm -hmm. known it before they released the game. And they, they're going to have to fix it to do Automatron in general. Automatron's going to add hundreds of keywords. Yeah. And they're gonna, which means they they already have crashed their own system testing it, which means they've already fixed it because they announced the thing, which means it's just in final testing. So, 
like they're gonna fix it which means it's gonna destroy all these fucking other mods and also if you do console modding the, the worst case thing you can do in console modding is making your mod dependent on another yeah, mod. a bunch of dependencies. Yes. See, the, my general plan from the get-go, people always ask me, like, hey, can you do this, do that for all these other mods? I'm like, actually, my mods only require what you are downloading with the one click. I've yes. always done it that way. I think that's one reason that my mods have become popular. So when I, in my general plan is to make a immersive armors for Fallout. Like, I... I've done before, so I'm making armors. I'm not going to make immersive armors with one armor. It's not that's not the concept behind it. It's supposed to be a compilation of lots of armors that are well integrated, and that's what I plan to do. But first, you know, I got to make a lot of armors. Anyway, um, am I going to make a compatibility patches for someone else's keywords? No, my pack's going to be big enough that it has its own keywords. It's going to be big enough that it has its own new crafting station. I don't need their crafting station. I don't need their enhancements or their keywords. I'll have mine. Uh, that's again, the plan. We've never talked about this. That's uh, all, You've seen my mods. I have a lot of them. I actually am working on an all-in-one that has its own crafting station you build that then lets you craft all of my own mods. Because so you t- <laughs> you're right. It's going to be big enough. Like It's it's more like you're using... like it, The thing I hate about it is especially like the... Um, the armor keyword thing, like nothing against these guys. Steek, especially for for SK, the, the, he's a, he's an accomplished modder. Besides that, the other guy with the armor keywords thing looked like he was just building off what me and Steek started working on with that stupid R- SK thing, and he's got like no other mods that are worth anything. And then he's got a mod that basically feeds off the popularity of weapon and armor mods. You know, but it is a good concept, and it does address a problem. But it also addresses a problem for the users and creates a problem for the authors. If he wants to make the integration um, something that is automated, where like he, he fi- has a script and it finds new armor entries and finds out what type they are, what slots they are, how much armor they have, I don't know, something. And, and, and you know, adds keywords through an injector script. He can make it work with everybody else's work without adding a workload to me. I don't really like it in reverse. He's forcing me to do more work, than, as you said, it, it, which in which is a positive feedback me- mechanism for his mod, not for mine. So it doesn't really add value to mine. It adds value to his because now everyone is required to use his in mine, but not in reverse. And and the other thing is the uh, it, well, once again, it's it's only a temporary fix right now because I'm pretty damn sure Bethesda is incompetent as I sometimes think they are and make fun of them about. They, yeah, they they're going to fix an issue it. Here. They know there's yeah. an issue and they're going to fix it, which means all these temp solutions right now are going to go out the window in a month. And so why why create such a workload on yourself for something that is more than likely going to disappear? And then you might have to go back and fix your shit again. But, but here's the other thing that I've learned the hard way from working with... Um, Having other mods that revolve around your mods, and I'm not even saying my mod requires them, but let that would be so much worse. So imagine that that guy <laughs> stops updating his mod. He's gone. Oh, yeah. And now that they have a new patch, his mod doesn't work. Well, my mod is revolving around his. My mod no longer would work without his mod, and he won't fix his mod. So now I have to go reinvent the wheel when I could have had my own system and kept it updated. But I've I've had other people, and they still do. They want to make mods that work with my mod, and then everyone use you know they're like, oh, this is so great. There was this one, I, I you know, I, I don't want to crack on this mod author, but okay, I kind of want to crack on this mod author, so I'm gonna do it. He uh he made. Just remember, it. nobody's watching this anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. They, 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 yeah, that's right. They, no one will find out. <laughs> um, it was immersive armors for NPCs, is what it was called. It was very popular. Um, it always shocked me that it was so popular because the whole point of immersive armors was that it was literally for NPCs. That was the actual only concept of it. I made armors and I gave it to the whole world. It was integrated. Well, he thought, I guess it wasn't integrated enough. So he slapped it on like, you know, 10 or 15 more people and published it. And everyone's like, oh my gosh, now it's on NPCs. So they all download it. Well, his mod goes out of date. And it no longer works, and everyone keeps using it with old versions that aren't, you know, supposed to work with it. And there's all these problems, and they all come where to report them? On my mod page, uh-huh. your mod doesn't work. I saw so and so wearing so and so armor, and they were like disappearing or something. Like I didn't edit that person. This are you did you use so and so? They're like, well, well, yeah. I'm like, well, go fucking complain over there. Like, 
I have enough st people to help and talk to over here, and all I hear about is all these sub mods making all these problems for me. And no one goes and complains to them. They complain complain to me. I don't know why. I guess they don't know that it comes from the other mod. I don't know. Did you know that you actually could get his mod removed if you didn't give him permission for that? I did give him permission for that. Oh, your fault. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I uh, I still do sometimes, but I don't know. I it's seriously. I actually put a sticky on that on immersive armors that says if you're using another mod that alters this mod, I literally will not answer your question. It got that bad. Yeah, I, I've I've started to put stickies up to just delete things because it's like. I don't know. You, like, I, I get the people using other, like, eh, well, like, I, like we were talking about my castle wall patch fix that, uh, that by the way, everybody totally beats his castle wall. <laughs> um, no, so the, uh, the, part of the problem with that one is it has like over 50,000 downloads now, I think, or something, right? And oh. I'll still get the bug reports from people who literally, you, if you scroll through the comments, you will see people who go, I have a problem, it won't snap. And then 20 minutes later, they comment back, oh, I fixed it, I added B general, add whatever. And I'm like, oh, you mean the thing that's in the sticky and in the description and in the yeah. video? And it's like, and I, I've literally put up 99.9% .9 of all bug reports and problems reported with this mod were user error. Follow the instructions, you're not the 0.01%. It and happens all the time. It happens people, to every mod author, honestly. Uh, I don't, there's not much you can do about that. It's it's bad. It's real bad. And uh, yeah, it's, it happens so, to me a lot. So so another question then. So what's the absolute worst, most annoying, god awful thing you've ever had to deal with in your mods? And if it's that NPC thing, oh well, we already covered it. Hmm. A like comment, user, whatever. Like what? What? What, what there, riled your boat up? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think. I've had a pretty positive experience with modding. I'm, I, I don't know. I um, I, I do think that one thing I get over and over and over in Skyrim is support for the varying um, big uh, boob bodies. Like several of many of them. There's so many. I I do get requests for that no, almost on. daily. To, to support them. And they don't know what that means, because that's like 100 plus hours to yeah, support one of them. You just correct me if I'm mistaken, but when you correct, because I'm pretty sure this is right. When, I'm probably wrong. The uh, When you equipped an armor, it actually puts a different body type underneath it of whatever's adapted to the armor. So technically, doesn't any armor work with anybody? It just changes no. the body type? No, it doesn't. Okay, then I'm stupid. That is what Caliente's body slide is cool with. They made it so they can through their program work with you, you can quickly adapt an armor to a new body um but no the the armors that i made in skyrim were for the vanilla body because that's the skyrim body and um if you want it to work on another one you have to literally edit the mesh you have to move it around but they have a body slide for skyrim too and it works um many times not all the time <laughs> not all the time not all the time um, I've heard there's some clipping issues with the Fallout one, but it generally works okay. Yeah, it's especially if you use multiple meshes instead of one solid one piece mesh. That that's that's kind of how it works best, and you know I don't always do that. Just you know, the I think the way they did it in Fallout is different. They they had a small body and a large body, and then it would tween those uh, meshes to scale up and down. They had to be perfect identical matches and vertices for it to work, but you had to have both the largest and the smallest in Skyrim for that to work, and that's how the body slide thing worked. You would you would change that around. Anyway. Yeah, as everybody's you know, eyes are glossing over and I'm realizing, you know, affirmation of why I've never dealt with armor. <laughs> it's, yeah. Anyway, that is, I'm, I'm a boring person. What can you say? <laughs> um, in in a uh, fallout they just have one they just have the normal size body and it scales them down from there which is so much better by the way to create armors because you don't have to create it twice it scales for you so i'm guessing it was easier and is easier for um caliente and and is, is osmos osmodius osmos it's a weird second name some other guy i don't want to i don't want to not mention him because i know he's a big part of doing body slide um you know credit to people where credit is doing stuff but um i think it's probably a lot easier now because they don't have the two system. I could be wrong, but... <laughs> anyway, I think that's why you saw the, the huge spree of all the sliders, presets, and all that stuff. 
I see shit. I realize that right now I have like, I just looked at the timer on this video. And while I really don't care how long these go, I realize that I'm now, somebody made a comment on my last video and go, these are getting longer each time. By the time we get to episode 20, it's going to be a day long interview. <laughs> and I realize that's right. Like Ellie's is 30. The next one's 35. The next one's like 38. Then it goes to 42. And we've just crossed the 45 minute mark. <laughs> and I'm like, it's so hey, true. You, you can cut something out. It's okay. Oh, fuck that. You think I'm editing this video? <laughs> that shit. This is going to go on forever. But <clears throat> I'll close this one out with the, the obligatory one that annoys half the people and the other people go, rah. Um, the, the paid modding. Just thoughts, overall, general impression. You know, have at it. What do you think they should do? What do you think should be done? What do you think they failed? Like, just hit it from wherever you want to hit it or say, I plead the fifth. Uh, I don't plead the fifth. I, um, I think that there are strong... Pros and cons, and I really do think that. I think that the modding community as you see it now will change a lot. But there are good... So that's that's the negative. So people like me, I am not a professional um, 3D artist. I am not a professional rigger. I don't script. I'm not a professional. I, I do work in the gaming industry. I know all sorts of things about games, but people are better at the things that I'm doing than me. They don't do it for free, though, because it's their job. Those people will start modding, and they'll start modding a lot if there's money in it, which means the quality of what you can get will be better, but it will cost money. So you can get better quality, you just have to pay for it. So that's a plus and a minus in and of itself. Also, some startups... So I, I think I can make things that, while I can't compete with the best people, can still be used by some people, and they'll be enjoyed. But if you're brand new, the entry will be harder. Because right now, you can kind of start up and start winging it, and people will enjoy your work. Well, if everything's incredible, it'll be hard for your fairly meager mod to be used by anyone. I think that that will be a downfall. Um, uh, so increased talent, you know, better quality, more options. I think those are all pluses, but I really do think the general community around kind of like, I've never done anything before, let's start now, and then you become someone that people know in the modding community, um, like me, I think that'll be a much more rare story. That is actually a lot of points that have never been brought up yet. The, uh, I didn't even really think about some of that, because <laughs> that's actually a really good point. The, the, yeah. No, that's a good point. I can't really argue with that too much. The, uh, I didn't really think about, you're right, that people who do this for a living would, might actually come in. They're just, they're just better. They're just better. I mean, it's just, you know, you don't have to, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, I have so many million, you know, downloads. I'm the best. I, but I'm not. If, if there was big money in it, there would be, you know, immersive armors, but just better quality. I, I hate to say it, but, you know, they'd get paid tons and tons of money to do it. And so they'd do it. If you know, if if all the people making these mods were as skilled as everyone thinks they are, they just own their own game companies, but they don't. Well, that that's another two-edged sword thing too, where it's like the like because because part of one of the things that I want to do in the future is make my own video game, and I've done a lot of research on it, and mm -hmm. it's it's costly as fuck. Yes, like, it's one of those things that is pretty expensive to do, and and I mean part of the hardest part about it is. Uh, I think the biggest cost expenditure is 3D assets. Because mm -hmm. 3D modelers are still paid way too much. And programmers are a dime a dozen because they're generally a boring sort and they'll just do what you tell them to do. And there's been a massive influx of programmers in the last 10 years because of the gaming industry and programming and Microsoft. It's it's caused a lot of drive into that level of education. And the... Um, but the, the thing that... I'm fucking just digressing all over the place... The, the thing that I'm wondering, though, is like how kickstarting would go in terms of modding if Bethesda's going to make money off it. Because right now, we're, we, if we do a Kickstarter, Bethesda will shut us down so fast, it's not even funny. Um, you can't Kickstarter it, to do any mod. You'll get sued out your ass and shut down. But they should. They should shut you down. It's their game. Yes. And, but the thing is that I'm wondering is if they do paid modding, how would Kickstarters work then? Because if you're Kickstartering to do a mod to sell for pay... You won't. They need to make sure they're getting a piece of the pie. It's their game. Well, see, that's what I'm wondering. Is like if, if but if you're doing a Kickstarter to make a mod, you won't. Then sell. They won't let you. They won't let you. To then sell, though. 
They won't let you. You don't think so? No way. They, you kickstart your own shit. They don't care how you do it. If you don't do it, they also don't care. But when you do it, they make money. That's how they want it. <laughs> That's what I'm kind of wondering. Like the, um... the there's there's a lot of gray area. I, some people have uh, patreons or patron. I don't even know how you say it, and they're yeah. getting money. Uh, some, I mean, you and I, we get some donations. I think that's less of a gray area because it's not with uh, expectation necessarily, um, but something like uh, and but th- that's kind of again, Patreon is supposed to be like supporting people. Sometimes they give you promises, sometimes they don't. It's this I don't know. There's a lot of gray area, but I do know that they spend a lot of money making these games, and they're going to protect their property, and I think they should. That's why I'm wondering if there's like as part of the thing that I'm thinking is I'm hoping they'll be if they do paid modding, whatever, like. Like, I mean, say I release all my mods as one pack, sell it for a buck, and, you know, two, three million people downloaded it. Well, that means I made Bethesda well over a million dollars. Like, at that point, I'm hoping that they're, like, open to negotiation or if they just tell me to fuck off. Because ideally for me, like, making a new, making a brand new video game is fun and all, but getting experience and getting people to work with is a lot easier in modding. Yep. And I would love to just, like... It's like the dumbest thing of me to say for how much I criticize Bethesda and their money grubbing ways and shit. But they're a business; you can't really fault them. But it's like I would love to just put two hundred thousand dollars into making like the most badass DLC fucking mod I could come up with and having fun with it. Yep. And the problem is, is that where's my where's my input into doing that when my return would be what I would get back because my cut is still as shitty because you know Bethesda is going to come out and try to only give us another twenty five percent, but. <laughs> See, I disagree with you there. I don't think it's a bad cut. Uh, for Fallout, I don't. I, I so don't because it, de- it kind of depends on your offering. But let's put it this way. It's their audience. And the money is in the people. The, their engine and their game and all that is expensive and proprietary. And that's theirs too. But they're following. You mentioned, if I throw all my stuff on there for a dollar, I might get three million downloads. And you're not wrong. But why? Because they own the following. It's their following. Now you are following. And without their following, you would be no one. And that is why they get all the money. I do. I only have to disagree on one point. Their engine is expensive as fuck and proprietary. The expensive as fuck is such a misnomer considering it's only an upgraded Gamebryo engine. Their engine is actually cheap as shit, and it's the one of the. It's actually the one of the things that I do okay. legitimately hate <laughs> them for. They, uh... Well, they they spent more money on it than they maybe should have. I promise you, they spent a lot of money on it. They. They spent more money on it than they should have. I cannot disagree with that. And it's still a pile of shit compared to Unreal Engine 4, which they should have just used in the first place. Yeah, well, I don't disagree that their engine has a lot of problems because I've spent a lot of time with their engine, and we we don't get along all the time. Um, It likes to crash on you. It it has a lot of issues. My point was not so much of how good it is, but, but it's a giant investment on their part. It's theirs. You don't get... You don't, you don't just get the keys to the castle without putting it in. You mentioned how expensive it is to make a game. There's a giant barrier. So they've already done that for you. And, 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 and you, all of a sudden you get that... to sell things in it? I mean, really, at 25% in my mind, I know that people probably think crazy. I think that's generous. No, no, no. It, it's, I, I think it was the, the dumbest, lowest cut we could have got for Skyrim because the audience to sell to was so minor. But I think It was that... not. Actually, Skyrim is in has a giant audience. It's still on like the number like up in the top 10, 15 selling games now. No, no, but user base that constantly concurrently used it on Steam was in the low 1. Point something million. And the the problem that I had was a 25% cut on a 4-year-old game with the user base of 1. Point whatever million and them taking no legal responsibility for your shit, no moderation and doing no promotions for your stuff. Uh, that, I mean, that's different. I think that they have more responsibility than they were taking. Yeah, and I think, I, I think there were lots of problems. Nice. But let's put it this way. Steam. Steam, uh, most vendors take about a 30% cut. Yeah, correct. I mean, uh, you're getting almost as much as Steam for, for the actually, services. We're actually getting the exact same as Steam. Steam was giving 5% of their cut to different services like Nexus and other things that you could put your five that you could actually send five percent of Steam's cut to different service providers. Steam was the, actually pretty generous. Steam was I think there's also there's another scenario that I think you're probably not entertaining. So you really care about your mods and work hard on them. I care about my mods and I work hard on them. But there's a guy somewhere out there who will spend five minutes 
making a map mod or like drawing really horribly drawn nipples onto what <laughs> otherwise was just a skin map that didn't have them. And they're going to publish that and they're going to make a million dollars. That's a good point. And now does that 25% cut look different? You know, you're really giving too much credit to some people. And I think there's a balance. I, I don't know. You got to think from other people's point of view. If you want to talk about someone who makes a whole new DLC, like almost as good, maybe as good as, maybe better than their own, which actually are usually pretty good in standard of, standards of most DLC, um, then yes, 25% seems kind of small for what they invested. But not everyone's investing that. I would argue that the vast majority invest far yeah, less. I, I can't argue with that. I think there's, And I think the worst part is that you're entirely correct because people don't realize, they're like, well, it's not going to work. I'm like, it's a console. It's a console game. There's more, there's like 90% of the users aren't flipping console. And console users have been trained for the past five years to do microtransactions. And they yep. do it constantly without fucking thinking about it. And $1 here, $1 there, they won't even notice it till they're at $200 in. Because people are like, I can't afford $100 for a mod. I'm like, the console kitties do it all the time. They yep. won't even phase them. And Bethesda would be really stupid not to implement. Like, I, I really honestly think there's there's are they, aren't they questions. It's not really a question in my mind. I'm 100% for they're going to do it. Because it's a bad business choice not to implement paid modding at this point. But Gabe Newell said a, a couple years ago... And so he was a little ahead of most of the trend. He said, modding is the future of video games. Mark my words. And, it, and, he, and he, said, he said, Valve will be there. And they've been trying their best to be there for the future of games, because that's what they do. And they, they're trying to jump on it. They know it's happening. It is happening. And, it and just is what it, it is. It extends game life. It increases popularity, replayability. It, it does more sales. I mean, you can't deny that some like it, it ups the sales. Like Skyrim was a buggy game. There's a lot of fixes for it. There's a lot of patches. There's tons people, of people. People look at Skyrim like it's one of the best games ever made in many ways. But no one would ever say that if there were no mods for it. Yes, that's just the truth. It was a good game. It was definitely not one of the best games unless you had mods. And and marketing sales sells a game. The I read somewhere like one of the the we were mentioning CD Projekt Red Witcher thing. I I. I they give out, in case people don't know, I'm going to beat this with a dead horse. I love that company. They uh, they give out permissions to anybody who owns their game can rip assets from it and throw it into anything as long as they don't receive monetary compensation, which is why you see Witcher mods all over the place. And they have said that their sales go up from that yep. because people see the assets. They see And they're well made. made. Yeah, and somebody made a Yennefer character with her voice acting dialogue from Witcher her full outfit costumes ripped appearance in skyrim and it, that was in the hot files i think for a while and i think got tons of downloads and they said you know there's people saying they're buying the game because of that and shit and cd project red is like go for it publicity's publicity's publicity you bought the game you own the assets and that's a part of why i love them as a company but, but it, this this video this rant is proof now no one's gonna watch this video but <laughs> and if they do they certainly won't get this far into it but um <laughs> but uh people love them and it's viral we, we tell people we tell each other we talk yeah. about it they are a good solid company they make good products and they're good to their community i mean that's that gets around that does increase sales god i wish i wish they would fucking like if they had made witcher 3 uh moddable easy like oh my god they didn't they didn't deliver on their mod tools like they said they would no people I, people it, uh were not too thrilled you know for them i give them a little more <sighs> Their engine is definitely proprietary and, like, their own build. Like, their engine is a very special, their own build shit. So I don't think they had tools to release, like... But they actually said they were going to release a full did they modding really? kit, yes. Huh. Uh, I, it may be out now, but last I looked, it still was not. I, I haven't heard anything about it. I would. I mean, Witcher 3 is not ancient by any means. I mean, it now would not be too late by many standards, but... Um, People thought it would be sooner, well, and I, I don't know if it's that, even ever going to be. If anybody, if you haven't played the game, Witcher 3 doesn't need any mods. No. It's like the but, best game fucking ever. But you'd ever. still be surprised what you what people might throw in there that you didn't think you needed. There'd be a lot of fun, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I the only the only bitch I really have about the game is, you know, if, if you had it on medium settings for combat, you could basically, like, attack, dodge, roll, attack, dodge, roll, and kill uh, anything in the Quinn. game. Quinn. 
sign Quinn. You put the shield up, you hit yeah, people, you put the shield, but, up, put the shield people, back up. The shield One back up. roll, shield, yeah. Now, if you up the, if you up the difficulty, it's a little bit harder. Gotta use your potions and all that stuff, yeah. But it, I did fucking love the game. But yeah, you're right. I mean, if like as much as I love Bethesda games and crap and love modding them and shit and even the Tomb Raider, if any anybody who asked me for a recommendation on an RPG game, the first thing is like Witcher. Yeah. Go buy the damn but, thing. But the, the what I was saying, that the uh, modding's the future, they know. They uh, they were giving away prizes to make Christmas outfit mods for That's their right. game. They they are trying to incentivize modding of their game because it is the future. And they know that if they don't catch on, if they don't grow their modding audience, it'll be a detriment to their brand. I it depends on where they go with with uh, Cyberpunk and then the other one. I the moment they open modding tools, I'll jump ship and try it at least for a while because it's. <sighs> As much as I hate learning something new, like I would jump into it for Witchers because, like you said, it's the love of the company, the love of their game, the absolute just fucking gorgeous game as well as gameplay. Yeah. Like, and they they learn from their mistakes. I don't know if you played Witcher one and two, but they um they, they I played all of Witcher two. I I tried Witcher one, but it was out a like years before I tried it, and it was so brutally bad graphic wise. By the time I played it, it was a bit hard to enjoy. And, and a lot of their gameplay mechanics and shit were terrible in Witcher 1, and they improved them, like, I'd say... Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of spam clicking combat is what I heard. Yeah, there was, like, they improved it, like, two or three fold in Witcher 2, and then Witcher 3 I almost had zero complaints about. Like, they just literally listened to everything. Well, they, else they won Company of the Year and Game of the Year. They won, like, everything of the year and all the award places everywhere, and yeah. they deserved it. That had to piss Bethesda off, though. You gotta think about it. Don't they, they've won that, like, every year, except for this title, didn't they? Well... I think, I don't think that even Bethesda could think that they could have beaten them. What I think Bethesda probably said is, why do they work that hard and not charge more? <laughs> <laughs> they put so much into this. We, we all every paid time you think you beat that game, it's you're halfway. Dude, it's I, crazy. Not going to ruin it for people. This isn't a spoiler. This is just it's a state of fact. When you get to the point in The Witcher where it says. You want might want to turn back now and complete all your quests. You, you, you think know, you're, you're about done. You think and, you're about done. It's like twelve hours later. Yeah, and you're like a you're like a hundred hours in at least anyway. You're like, well, it's over now, and then it just keeps going. I, I think because I didn't have the difficulty jacked up. I think I was like fifty five, sixty in, and then I was like, oh, okay, it's the end of the game. Cool, I got a couple hours left. Over twelve hours later, I finally hit the end of the game. I was like. Holy shit, that's I, how you do an ending. I did a lot of side quests at the beginning because I, I really like to see all it has to offer. And their side quests I, are legitimately better than the main quests in Bethesda games. Their side I, quests. Um, I, I got to admit that I spent 45 minutes. Um, I found a griffin and I had this potion thing at like I was low level too. It's it's one of the things that you shouldn't be getting to like the end of the game. Like if you have this griffin's feather or some shit he was a, one of the like hardest creatures to kill yep. you would you would be able to craft a, a poison or whatever it was one of the things for your blade that basically um every power attack would use all of your fucking stamina shit and deal like 10 to 20 percent of their health and damage hmm. i spent 45 minutes to kill that griffin like 20 something levels below him and then i crafted that and i basically 10 shot everybody in the game after that <laughs> Like, so I, I, I progressed a little too fast after that point. Yeah. Like, I was like, oh, oh, a monster that can kill me in one hit? All sounds I gotta do like is land ten looking shots. Up, it sounds like you were looking up ways to beat it online. You're that guy. No, I actually didn't. I fucking How found... did you find out about this random thing? No, no, I, I, got the, I got the recipe for it. Oh, okay. I got the recipe for it, and then I was looking at it like, I was like, I really want to make this fucking thing. Yeah. And then I ran across the bird. I found the fucking... Because I, I, I do the... um. I do the OCD thing where I start to clear everywhere when I go places, which yeah. in The Witcher doesn't work because they're super high work. level areas, right? But I'm yeah. a I'm a fucking persistent asshole where I will literally fight the stone golem who's twenty levels higher than me for sixty minutes just to kill him. The which, other thing, the other reason it doesn't work is because you'll never play another game. It'll you'll play a thousand <laughs> hours. You can't clear that whole game. It's it's, it's so, so much. much. Fun, though. Oh, it's so good. Uh, anyway, okay, we've been going on for a fucking hour. We need to stop this thing. Yeah. Boy, boy we've been circle jerking over fucking Witcher now. Hey, like, you know, fuck you, yeah. Bethesda. No, no one cares, yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, I'm going to, as usual, guys, uh, I'll just put a link to his um, profile page below. Uh, I don't know. 
I'm too tired to even think clearly still. I'm actually feeling a lot better today, which is great. Um, but yeah, video's over. Check it out. I do have a Patreon. It supports making... It doesn't really support shit. But... <laughs> fuck it. It's like, it's like Bethesda. Ta I'm taunting them to try to sue me for it. But yeah. <laughs> anyway, okay, I'm stopping recording. Fuck it. <laughs>